Professor Bright here, and welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we are just the best cop out there. Just got our life together, everything is going great, what is this? I'm easily distracted, and I have a lot to do, actually. Quite a few things. Oh, pigs go home. Well, yeah. We're not the most beloved of police officers, but we're the best! Absolutely the greatest. Uh, unfortunately, we are missing our shoe, which is up there, so I'm gonna fix that real quick. And then we'll get back to solving the whole murder and reporting our badge missing and a few other things that we need to do. We have a list. Fortunately, this is a... Well, this is a very interesting... RPG. I'm sorry, skill points can buy new thoughts. Hmm. Or forget old ones. So why would I want to forget thoughts, though. Huh. We'll look into that. Uh huh. Equip a plastic bag, collect balls, and sell them. Hmm. Good to know. Unfortunately, I don't have a plastic bag. I am so poverty that I don't even have a plastic bag to use. So, you know, that's a bit of a thing. Is that gonna... Yeah, that's gonna get me out of here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna not say some weird things. Although, the smell of the sea makes you dizzy. Although, it's worked out pretty well so far, hasn't it now? I have a shoe. I now have two shoes. Task complete, find your other shoe. There they both are. Two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet. Like two baby crocodiles. Yeah, wait, these don't really look like normal cop shoes. I mean, I'm clearly not a normal cop. Did you see what I just did when I tried to skip my bell? It was amazing. And it really elevated this game, in my opinion. Pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. How do they fit? Good. They're balanced, comfy, feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. I bet. But what do they give me? Extra composure and minus one suave affaire. <laughs> so they definitely wouldn't have helped me in that uh, little task I gave myself there. Oh man, I don't know why I did that. I'm glad I did, but I've more or less calmed down from that. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I won't be laughing the entire time. Maybe. I don't know, this... This has a good sense of humor to it. I appreciate that. Sleeping heals all your health and morale. Yeah, I found out this actually takes place over at most 10 days. And at minimum 5 days. Which... Yeah, cool. I just read like a review of it just to get an idea of how long this is going to be. Apparently, it's like a 40-hour RPG. And as far as I can tell, no combat, though, right? Because I don't have any combat statistics. Not really. It's a curious thing. Huh. Well, before I go back in there, I need to get that ammonia. And uh, let's talk with you. Actually, I probably should report my badge missing. Yeah, ammonia, badge, ammonia, badge, badge. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. Hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Cupris Kinema motor carriage. Open the door. It will be fine. In the cabin... Thank you. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer. That's rather loud now, isn't it? A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools like some men are. He's clearly a little protective of his tools, but what can you do? Work is work. Um, mmm. Mmm. 
I feel like I need all of these. Uh, take the... F well, yeah, just take everything. Take the red-tipped pry bar. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. Take the rubber-handled chain cutters. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. And take the hand-cranked flashlight. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. Let you see in the dark... See things in the dark, rather, that you would otherwise miss. And we'll just push that back in. Pushes right back into its nest, it does. Uh, yeah, run your fingers over one of the steering levers. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle is so very familiar in your palm. Huh. So this is like a diesel punk kind of setting, yeah? Maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Because, I mean, that's not a normal car. And you're not going to convince me that it is. Tap on the fuel preheater gauge, though. Uh, as you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button, he says, and jingles his keys. Won't start without the ignition key. Translation, we're not going anywhere right now. Alternative translation, don't even think you can drive my MC. I mean, come on. MC, motor carriage. Oh, not car? Hmm. What alternate history thing is this? I pick up the radio, though. We have to. It's the responsible thing to do, probably. Although, hmm. There might be consequences to this. I regret this decision. Anyway, the frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker copy. Oh. Um, hi, Alice. This is the officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. This is Officer... Alice Dimitri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Hmm. Actually, yeah. Let's speak with a civilian first. I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie. She may have reported a murder. Kim, didn't Gart give you Sylvia's number? Yes, hold on. Lieutenant takes a look at his notes. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. Takes a bit to get to the phone. Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvia Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello. A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's millions of miles away from here. Hello, this is police calling. I have some questions for you. Hmm. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. She recognizes your off voice almost immediately. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You... Well, hmm. Was it you who called the police? I have to keep in mind, I might have limited chances to actually speak here. But why didn't you call, though, if you were not the one who called the police? What? Of course it bothered. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a fair point. Didn't the corpse be behind your workplace bother you? What? Of course it bothered me, but I thought the Union already knew about the corpse. What does this Union have to do with anything? No one calls the police. You can hear her adjust the receiver in her hand. The Union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, she seems to be looking for words. What the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Hmm. Hum. Wait, Kim, lower your microphone. Is she speaking the truth? The Union is the law around here? Legally, no. In reality, yes. He looks around. Martinez is de facto policed by the Dock Workers Union. Words are not necessary to feel the lieutenant's discontent for the situation. Hmm. 
Hum, hum, hum. Yeah, it looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Well, I mean, realistically. Perhaps I shouldn't admit that, though. I wonder. There isn't really a very good negotiating kind of one. Um, maybe back off, though. We don't want to have her hang up. I see. And maybe there's something else you can tell me about. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't call you because I didn't want to get in trouble with the others, with the Union. I'm sorry about that. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry, I don't. She clears her throat. Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone or the one on the coast. Okay. So we only have two possibilities for where it got called in, then. With someone else, the lieutenant makes a note. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. Just might take a while. Okay, next question. You quit your job at the Whirling. Why? I mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear a tense up on the other side. Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Hmm. Wait, why aren't you comfortable discussing it with me? I, uh, stack waivers. Let's just say I left because I needed to get away from someone. Okay, did you leave because of Gart? What? She stops abruptly? No, why would you even think that? Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You have to stand up for yourself. Like, I agree on that point. But at the same time, it's like her, it's her boss. So, like, how is she going to stand up? Well. You told me he asked you out. You're saying it didn't happen? Please don't bring Gart into this. It's none of your business. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Okay, that's... Mm, okay. I think I got everything I need. Thanks. I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Wait, why did she seem angry with you? Yeah, why? Yes, you've obviously done something to upset her at the Whirling Rags when she was still working there. Wait, before you go, you're mad at me, right? Tell me, what did I do? I can't remember anything. I'm not mad, it's just... Stack sighs again. You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the squaw thing happened. It just made me want to quit. What squaw? Squaw thing? Skua thing? The stuffed bird, the great skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. Oh. And you said it's been giving you shit ever since you got here. Yeah, that sounds like me, all right. Bitch bird got what was coming to her. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Hmm. Ah. Hmm. Yes. This doesn't sound anything like me. I love birds. I mean, clearly you don't. Uh, yeah, that doesn't sound like me, though. Yes, well, the stack on the radio suggests Sylvie doesn't have a comment. Rubbish, you're a green hat and feather toned bird watcher. Actually, I think I might be a birdie, a bird watching enthusiast, you know? Am I, though? No, I. Mm, no, I don't think so. Or a cop with brain damage, one of the two. Hmm. Yeah, you gotta talk back to your skills sometimes. Yeah, so you're telling me that I was the one who made you want to quit? Yes, obviously, you were the worst client I've ever seen. And I've seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months, but you... She pauses. Go on, I want to know what I did. Well, you were the worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Ooh, creepy. Even about little things, like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening on repeat. No more. I hate it now. Uh, hold on, which song? We go on by the ooh. She said, sighs. Can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. Sorry, sorry about the song. Tell with that song. Then it was your room, your project. Experiment to see how bad it can get in there. Wow. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you are a piece of shit human being, and why does anyone even let you work as a policeman? Then you'd fire yourself, but you can't even do that. Sounds intense. And then I had to deal with your toilet, the one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I don't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. Wait, police documents? I, ugh, the ones I had to wrench out of your toilet. What happened to those? 
I damn it, I don't remember what I did to your damn papers. I remember every little thing I do. Resentment gives way to concern in her voice. Especially when there's a hurricane loose. It's your fault for losing them, not mine. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. Hmm. Suspicious. Okay, I get it. I wasn't a very good tenant. I was the worst tenant. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. Hmm. I was trying to show you the world of tomorrow. The great panic at the end. Yeah, I am truly sorry for everything. Wow. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna be honest. Like, I feel like this would be more if I was a, you know, casual cop or an asshole, one or the other. Um. Yeah, I'm really sorry that. Oh, God, I, I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just trying to call me again, let's pretend it never happened. But when I spoke to Guard, it seemed like he thought you left because of him. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. I like Guard. I really do. Did he cross the line when he asked you out? No, I was, I was actually flattered. I always liked him. It was just bad timing with the corpse and all that. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. Hmm. I don't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. I should have told him, maybe. I could tell him. Okay, but please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. God, I just... Fortunately, I don't have my gun. I don't have my gun. Oh, that's actually very bad. That's actually very bad. Someone could be shooting people with my gun. Oh, no. I hope I... Uh, well, maybe it's still in my room. Anyway, uh, what else did I sing beside the ooh? I'm looking for a song. Oh, all sorts of things. Some disco, rock too. So much disco and rock. So very much. Maybe you can help me identify this one particular song. Which one would that be? Uh, one that was really sad. Sad? I think the one you mean is the smallest church in St. Sains. Butchered that right up. Her voice carries a tone of disappointment. Interesting, you still have to find it, however. Still progress made. Right, thank you for talking with me. Uh, take care. Hear a sigh of relief on the other end of the radio. Wordless, the call breaks. Then, the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Um, could you connect me to the 41st precinct? I have something I need to report. Yeah, um, I might have lost my gun as well as my badge. So, yeah. This is not in my inventory, I don't think. Can't see from here. Uh, just a second, officer. Uh, she puts you on hold, the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. 10 2, 10 5, this is 41st. Come on in. Over. A scrawny old man sits in a dusty cubicle, smoking, with a large white rectangle sewn on his vest. In front of him is a box shaped apparatus with an array of wires and antennas the radio switchboard. The man uses relay code. You got this. You're a cop, and you cops know relay code. 10 4, station 41. I've got urgent business. Over. 10 4, 10 5. What's your status? Over. Just reporting in. Over. 10 18. State your message, sir. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, there's, um, hmm. I need to report my badge missing, you see. 10 9, over. Uh, my badge. I, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Ten four message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 1022 the captain. Over. Jean Vikemir. Vikemir? Vikemare? Hmm. I like Vikemare. Is it him? A dry voice asks in the background. What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it in. He what? He lost his badge? Hey, who's this? This is communication officer Jules Pideau, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? Over. What's he saying? He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. It's your part. I'm sorry. It's your partner, Satellite Officer Vikemir, Vikemare, sir. Over. Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? The man in the background sounds like he's losing his patience. He lost his badge? 
Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? It's Officer Dick. He tries to speak through laughter. Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. <sighs> ha ha, officer's lost his badge, ha ha. Like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. I mean... Am I though? Like I'm, I probably am not, maybe. I, yeah, okay. <laughs> he says he. this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs sarcastically. Oh, God damn it! is he fucking kidding? The whole station's gonna be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikemare is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen dicked us. I mean, can we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. 10-4, I hear you, officer. I'm just gonna make a note here that you are in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me, Mac. Come here, you gotta hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. What's going on? Supercop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all please just stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asked that you please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Wow. Sergeant Torson was running if you found your badge yet. Over. Hmm. You don't have a comeback. Sorry, it's hard to think like this. Yeah, that's fine. He's not replying. Looks like he is still looking for it. You can hear laughter in the background. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I mean, we have other things to discuss. Probably shouldn't have even bothered trying to defend myself there. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that. Over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. New heights, even for Captain Sober. Ask him, the speaker gasps for air. Ask him if he lost his gun, too. The room roars with laughter. Sergeant Torson wants to know if you lost your gun, too. Over. Check your pockets, check your holy fuck, you don't know where it is, do you? I don't have my gun? Yeah, that's more or less my reaction, but I think that might end up being verbal. Oh god, it's not here. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Hmm, yes, uh, I definitely did not lose my gun. 10-9, come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna be fun. Convince them you didn't lose your gun. Like over the phone, it's easy. Just say it like it's the truth and then it becomes it. No, of course I didn't lose my gun. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I mean, want to imagine the poor prick who has to relay that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. Can't have some gangbanger running around with it. We're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. Do you need further assistance? Over. Uh, you know what? This might seem odd, but there's uh, personal details I'd like to discuss. Although at this point, I feel like I shouldn't speak with them at all because I feel like I feel like all the defending myself just made everything worse. Um. Yeah, and they're asking for financial assistance at this point. Very bad idea. But uh, yeah, let's discuss some personal details. Uh. Okay, 10-4, sir. I hear you. Relay your question. Over. Wait, before you say... Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What say I think about? You're gonna be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone you lost your memory. Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. Hmm. 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 Yeah, okay. I want to know if you got my badge's description right in your report. Could you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth? I feel like they're going to be assholes about that, though. Uh, let's try. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revicolian Cavalry Force. That will stop wasting time. I like Mac. 
He seems fun. Uh, anyway, yeah, I'm, uh, hmm. Yeah, let's wrap this up. I got a feeling everything else I ask is just gonna make things worse. 1010, transmission completed, standing by, over, and call. Roger that, 1010, over and out. The static ends with a loud click, then everything is silent in the cabin. Whew. Well. Thank you, autosave. Also, what is with the technology here? Like, this feels like 1950s. I guess that's what this is? Hey, I'm gonna talk to you later. But, uh, yeah, let's talk with this lady real quick. The RCM and Martinez? What can I help you with? Oh, hello. Uh, you sound surprised that we're we here? I see a lot of police around here. That's all. Hmm, is that way it says pigs go home over here. Got some questions for you. What can I help you with? Uh, oh, this is the- Oh, this is the gardener! With the ammonia, okay. My, uh, partner told me- you blah, 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 blah. My partner told you may have some ammonia. Uh, can I have some? Sure. I'm done with it. She takes a small capsule out of her breast pocket and hands it to you. Go easy on that, F. Give me a terrible headache. Oh, uh, what's this, uh, fuck the police business? Excuse me? She doesn't understand. She's uncomfortable. Maybe you should drop this line of questioning. Never mind. It's fine. Hmm. We need directions. Where am I? I'm a bit disoriented. This is Revercole, right? Yes, sir. District of Martinez. She looks around, thinking what else to say. The intersection is called Roundabout North. He knows where we are. He just wants directions. The lieutenant seems uncomfortable with the level of disorientation you are displaying. North. There's a pier. The Cape Side apartment buildings. Some more tenements. Not a lot, really. East. The Harbor Gate. Some kind of commotion, I think. Don't follow the local politics. A Frida store. Too, which apparently, if I had a plastic bag, I could recycle things in. And by things, I mean plastic bottles. Uh, what's in the south, though? Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably? Interesting. Are these all... cases for me to solve, I wonder? Uh, what's in the, in the west? She looks at the water. It's going to it's just water. No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some uh, islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Yeah, gotta run. On the other hand, maybe if I pushed harder. I don't know. Of course, someone told you back. She wipes her brow with the canary yellow glove. Her gloves, you get the feeling you need them. You have a dead body to deal with, after all. Uh, one more thing? Uh, can I borrow your gloves? Sure, keep them. I have another pair. She hands you the rubber gloves with no visible annoyance. Thank you. Hooray. Just have any inventory is enough. Neat. Let's put on some gloves. Excellent. Alright, well. Next, we have to deal with this body now that we've... I mean... I hesitate to say we've done anything good, but we have crossed off at least one of our things. Although, I wonder if this was technically necessary. If we could have just found our badge and then not had to report that, because that was mortifying, I will say. Um, wait. I have skill points? Yes? So I feel like I had more experience before. Hmm. Okay, assuming we do. Endurance is the thing that actually determines... Yes. Ah. Okay. So, yeah, endurance is going to be useful because, I mean, I want to not die, is the thing. Accept the changes and close. Ah, beautiful. Wait, what? Plus one health, charges one. Excellent, we're back up to full health. And that is my money situation, yeah? I'm assuming. All right, all right. Next episode, we go back to that dead body and we endure the young folk that are there. The kids these days, I tell you. But for now, thank you for your time. Note the like, comment, and subscribe buttons below. Use them responsibly, and I will see you all soon.